Hey everyone, how's it going? I dragged home another KLR. I don't need it, but I couldn't get enough of the coloring. Totally overpaid for it. It doesn't run. It's a 92. And I think the issue, I was told the issue was no spark. So let's pull it out and have a closer look at it and then we'll try and get it running. Stay tuned. So here it is, 1992 KLR 650. I've got an 01 over there. It was in pretty rough shape, so I had to do a, like a paint job on it. I wanna try and keep this bike as original as possible, so I'll do my best to restore the plastics and see if I can uh, replace or have reproduced the decals, and we'll get it back to look in stock because I bought it and I overpaid for it because of the colors on it. I think they're great. Anyway, it's a 92. Uh, and I live in British Columbia, Canada, where we have a collector plate program where any bike that's in good enough shape and are all original can qualify for what we call collector's plates. And then it's a reduced rate of insurance because I don't ride motorcycles enough to warrant having one insured year round, you know, for the thousand dollars or so that it would cost me. But collector's plates can be, you know, less than $300 a year and I can stomach that for the uh, a little bit of routing that I do, and I like these older bikes. Anyway, so we will take the side covers, the seat and the tank off of this and confirm that uh, it does in fact not have spark because I just took the previous owner's word for it. It could be something completely different. We've got this 01 that runs to take parts off of. You know, if it's a CDI unit, we can swap, but I wanna be systematic with this one and not just throw parts at it. We will, system we will go through it um, with the climber manual and check all the possible issues with the ignition system and we'll be smart and we'll get it running. So stay tuned, I'll be back with uh, when the bike is, is torn down and we'll confirm that it does in fact have or have not spark. See you soon. So now we've got access to everything. Next step is I'll be pulling the plug lead off. I'll pull the plug out as well and then we'll check for spark at the plug. So I think somebody's been in here before us. This is the plug that I pulled out. It was just finger tight and you can see the washer's not even been compressed. It's brand new. So uh, somebody's tried this already and given up. So let's plug that in. Can you see that? If it sparks there, hopefully you'll be able to see it. The bike does turn over. So let's give it a shot. Uh, it's in the dark. Yeah. Confirmed no spark. So let's just work our way back. We'll check, um, I guess next we'll work our way back. We'll check the, um, the coil. We'll check for continuity through the primary and secondary of the coil. Uh, and I'll pull that off and we can do that on the bench. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the coil off. I could maybe do it on the bike, but uh, just for clarity, we'll remove it. And we'll, uh, we've got two resistance measurements to check. We have the, now between, according to the climber manual, between the two um, primary connections, we should have a, a pretty low value of resistance. I think it said 0.15 to 0.2. Uh, anyway, we should have continuity. That's what we want. So I don't know if you can see my meter there. Okay, so I'll try and do a continuity test between Maybe I'll, I mean, this wiring looks like somebody's been here before. We'll pull off one of these leads just to make sure we're isolating the coil, not, you know, back feeding, measuring through other stuff. So we should have continuity there. And we do, yeah, 0.2, that's all we need. So we've got a circuit there. And then the, the spark plug side, we should have a pretty high resistance. So it's said to check between the black yellow wire and the spark plug boot. So we'll do that next. And we should have yeah, something in them in the kilo ohms. Let's see here. 3.8 to 5.8 kilo ohms. And we'll check. Oh. That's quite high. We're in the mega ohms. Can you see that there? 12 mega ohms, that's virtually an open circuit. So, 
Could it be the coil? Could it be that simple? No, it's probably not that simple. I just reread it and it said with the spark plug lead cap removed. So I've removed the cap and we'll check again between the negative side and we'll pop that in there. There we go, 4.6K ohms. So that the, the coil checks out. This is a resistive uh, plug cap. That's why we're getting the mega ohms there. There's a resistor in there. So we've removed that. Yeah, there's, uh, anyway. So the coil checks out. We'll move on and see what's next. Before we go any further, uh, you'll, know, you'll remember that I, when we checked the secondary of the coil with this plug cap attached, we got like 12 mega ohms, which is really high, right? It's the nearly an open circuit. We got 4.5 kilo ohms uh, through the plug lead to the negative terminal, and that's within spec because it said something like 3.5 to 5.5 K ohms right in the middle. And now I don't know if you can see this, but it says five kilo ohms there. And I assume that would be the reading through this plug boot, but I'm getting, if you can see that, five mega ohms. Am I missing something? This says five, is it safe? It says five K ohms. So um, I'm gonna see if I can find a replacement for this from just from junk that I've got lying around and we'll see if we get spark. Cause that's really high resistance, right? And if it's nowhere near what it says it should be. So uh, it's in the order of uh, about a thousand times greater, isn't it? Between mega and uh, kilo. So I'm gonna replace that and uh, yeah, why overcomplicate it? I'll grab a, a replacement for that and we'll see if we've got Spark. So here's the one that I just pulled off of the running KLR that I've got. Uh, it doesn't look like it's in very good shape, but it must work because it, well, the bike runs. So if you can see that, let's check here. 4.9 K ohms. You can't see, but there's a little K there instead of the mega ohms that we have in this one here, let's just confirm. Maybe I'm not making good contact. Yeah, it says like six mega ohms. It's all over the place, but it's really high. So uh, let's pop this one onto this bike and see if we get spark. Uh, just before I put it back on the bike, we'll measure our total resistance here. So it should be five K ohms or, you know, four and a half K plus five for the boot. And there we go, nine, nine point, I just saw it, 9.5 K ohms. So uh, that makes sense, right? So let's, this might not be much of a video after all. I thought we we're gonna have to work through the whole electrical system, but wouldn't that be nice? I'll install it and then we'll check for spark. Okay, let's check for spark. It's reconnected, got the new boot or the the boot off the vehicle, off of the, the KLR that works. Key on. Nothing. Okay. Should have known better than to get my hopes up. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's figure out what's next. Okay, next we'll check the pickup coil. Uh, that's these two wires. Black and uh, black red. So I'll separate it from the CDI. And uh, so this is checking the harness all the way all the way down to the pickup coil and back. Uh, and we should have, uh, let's see, 100 to 150 ohms. Getting mega ohms again. Let's make sure we've got good connection. Here we go. What did I say? 100 to 150? We've got 116. So that's okay. So let's check the exciter coil next. That's into this harness here. We're going to be checking between, if we can get it apart, checking between the red wire and the white wire. And we should have between 100 and 100, and, or 100 and 200 ohms. And let's check. Between 100 and 200 ohms. Let's make sure we get good connection back there. Getting kilo ohms. 
Why is that? Get mega ohms. This is the exciter circuit. I'll just confirm that we're on the right two wires. This is from the uh, sort of the alternator, or I guess you call it the stator, right? Uh, these three yellow wires, and then this is, these two are the exciter that go to the that provide power to the ignition, uh, the CDI. So uh, I'm just going to confirm that these wires aren't broken anywhere. I'm going to have a think, and then I'll come back and share with you what I've found. So since we got like a kilo ohms on our exciter coil instead of you know it should have been between 100 and 200 ohms, I'm going to take this cover off and see if this is where, I don't know if you can see that, where the wires run into uh, the stator cover here, but I want to take off this sprocket cover just to make sure the wires aren't chewed up or anything behind there. And if that's not the case, I guess we'll have to take this left side cover off. Um, but one step at a time. I'll remove this and we'll see what we find. So I've got the sprocket cover off. You can see the wires enter neatly into the stator cover. There's no damage to the wires. So it seems strange that we have 4,000 ohms and we should have 100 or 100 or 200. So I'm just going to check the harness one more time, make sure I've got good connection uh, up at the, the harness connector. And if I do, then I guess the next step is to take off this um, the cover. We'll drain the oil first, of course, then we'll take off the cover. Well, I did the connection check one last time and I'm still getting 45,000 ohms for the exciter coil. Um, the stator itself checks out okay, so I wonder if there's a bad joint in there. So, um, well, I guess the next step is to drain the oil and take this cover off. It seems like kind of a bummer, but uh, you know, if we want to be systematic about it, that, that does stand out as something that we should look into. So, here we go. Alright, I had a change of heart. I'm not going to drain the oil, I'm just going to tip the bike over. So the bike's not on the body work, it's just on the stand there. So don't worry about that. Uh, I've got the uh, skid plate loose and I'll undo all these bolts and we'll pull off the, maybe I'll remove the, the shift lever as well. And um, we'll get that, all, that uh, stator cover off. Have a look. Well, that wasn't so bad. So here's the rotor, stator. These two are the exciter coils. They provide the energy to the uh, CDI, the capacitive discharge ignition box. And here's the pickup coil. The pickup coil che checked out okay. The stator coils checked out okay. But these uh, exciter coils are what we're interested in. So you can see the red and white wire here. Those are the red and white wire that are in this harness here. Uh, the three yellow ones go to the, uh, the stator and the red and the white ones go to the um, exciter and this is where we're getting like uh, 45k or 4.5k anyway it's supposed to be 100 to 200 right so uh, we'll check I'll get my meter we'll check between the white and the red here and if it's 100 to 200 within spec then we know the issue is in the harness and if it's the same you know it's whatever the 4.5k ohm that we got up there, then we know the issue is with the uh, is with the exciter them itself. So uh, we'll just keep on eliminating things. I'll grab my meter and we'll we'll do some measurements. Hopefully, you can see my meter screen there. We'll just check the meter it goes to zero. Can you see that? I can hardly see it. Well, maybe I'll just announce the numbers. Zero. Okay, let's go between the red and the white. I'm getting like 70k now. What's going on? Yeah, could that be it? Well, I guess we can eliminate the harness. If I measure between this red wire and the connector up there, if I get zero ohms, then the harness is good. I'm getting 72 kilo ohms now between um, between red and white 72 
Huh. Well, let's che I'll check the harness, and if that checks out, then the issue is uh, with those exciter coils, or one of the issues. Just upon closer inspection, you know, before we go throwing parts at this thing, can you see this? This is the solder joint. This is the red where the red wire connects. But can you see? Oh, let's get you right in there. This wire appears loose. See that? Yeah. This is this. This is a bad solder joint. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, look at that. This is all. Sorry for the the wobbling camera. Look at that. Hopefully you can see it. It's loose. Uh, I wonder if we can pull that off. I'm going to try and separate this wire off of the terminal because it seems like it's not connected very well. And then we'll do, uh, this terminal seems fine. We'll see if I can get a better connection between wire to wire. And maybe it's just a matter of re-soldering that joint. That would make my day. All right, I'm going to uh, look at this a bit closer and I'll uh, inform you what I find in just a moment. Well, that didn't, uh, that was sort of fruitless. I, I unwrapped the wire, but it's still soldered to that post. And I did sand it a little bit to remove the varnish. So now I'm on the wire. That eliminates that solder joint. And if I connect over to this solder joint, I'm still I'm at 63k. You can see that in the corner of your screen there. So um, 62. It seems to be variable though. You know, I just don't want to throw good money after bad. Is that how the saying goes? You know. Uh, but it seems all signs are pointing to this thing having too high a resistance to give the, to, you know, to, to give energy to the CDI. Because so it should be 100 to 200 ohms and we're getting 64,000 ohms. It doesn't seem to be the solder joints like I originally was hoping. So I guess next step is to um, get a new stator. You know, it's, what what's bothering me is it's just a coil of wire. Like, there's no there's no mechanical damage that's happened to it. It looks so like. Wh why would the wire break? I mean, it is nearly thirty years old, but and it's pretty fine wire. But uh, anyway, that's what's sort of boggling me, and I'm just hesitant to, to to replace it. But all signs point to this not being the correct number, and I don't know what else it could be. So. Uh, I'll go ahead and grab a new stator, and we'll see you back here shortly. Okay, let's do one final check. So the book says exciter coil resistance 100 to 200 ohms. Okay, so here is the exciter coil removed from the bike. This is the pair of exciter coils. We'll go from terminal to terminal where the red and the white wire connected and we were getting like in the thousands of ohms. And we still are. 53,000 ohms. And it should be 100 to 200. Just as I've been poking around here a little bit, uh, I found I, these, these two coils are in series, right? So uh, one and then the other. And there's a little crossover wire that goes between the two of them. And if I can get in there, I've, I've, I score, I scratched the insulation off with my uh, blade, with my, uh, it doesn't matter, razor blade. And now, see, look, this coil on the left is 72. But if I go from the center to the right coil, it's, that's where you get that 71K or, it's, yeah, it's in the K ohms, right? So this leftmost coil seems to be okay. 71-ish, if you can see that. But this is the other. This is from the center to the right coil. That's where we're getting those thousands of ohms. So it's there's a there's a, an open or a slight open, if there's such thing, in this coil. So uh, it seems plausible that this is our reason for for not running. So I'm just trying to build my confidence, 
you know, to order this thing and make sure that this is uh, one of our problems, and it seems to be. All right, that's it for now. So while we're waiting for the stator to arrive, um, I'm having a tough time shaking the idea that it could be also the CDI unit as well. That's mainly because of what the previous owner told me, uh, that he, that was his suspicion. Now, I think it's the exciter coils in the stator uh, because one of them was pretty much open. But, uh, so what I've done is I've taken the uh, CDI unit away, out of this bike because we're not sure if it's working in this bike. And I took it over to my O1 here uh, stripped it off so I could get access to it. And this is the CDI, I know it's pretty dark over here. This is the CDI from the 92 that we're working on, the blue one. And I, the CDI on this one is, is still here. So I've just oh, uh, I've just removed the connections to the on the bike one and I've connected the, the one from the 92. And I think that's the quickest way to see if this the 92 CDI works because if this bike runs, then the CDI is good. So let's give it a try. Okay, well that answers that question. So I think we are, that gives me confidence going forward now that we are definitely on the right path with the exciter coil. So we'll get that part, uh, we'll pop it in, and we should be uh, all wrapped up. So here we are, it's been a few weeks. The new parts arrived, the old one's here, new one obviously on the right, and we'll do a continuity check between the two ends of the exciter coil, and we now get 170 ohms, which is what we want. Uh, the spec is, I think, between 100 and 200. So I've just wrestled that side cover back on. The wiring is all here. There's the pickup coil and then the exciter with the um, stator. That's This is the new part of the harness. This is the existing uh, ex uh, pickup coil. And here is the neutral wire. So we're pretty close now. I'm gonna run this up. I've got this upper engine mount off. I, that seems like most of the wires run through there for, for protection. So I had to take that off to reroute or to replace the, uh, the harness. So I'll run that up to the connections up there and then we'll, uh, we'll check for spark. Fingers crossed. Okay, it's all buttoned up now. All the harness uh, connectors are up here in the right spot. We've got our plug is still out. I'll just ground it to the metal. And hopefully when we turn it over, we get spark now. If I can only get it to stay there. Okay, key on, press the start button, look for spark. Oh, did we see something there? Yeah, good. Looks like spark. Right on. I'll, um, I'm just in the process of cleaning up the fuel tank over there. I'll get some good fuel in it. We'll pop it on the bike and uh, I don't see why it wouldn't run. Okay, so the tank's back on. It's got a little bit of gas, it's on reserve. The plug is in, the fuel line and the vacuum line are plumbed to the tank. So let's, uh, we know we've got spark now, so it should run. Might take a little while to get started, but uh, should I choke? I guess I should choke. Here we go. Let's give it a go. It's got an exhaust leak. Whoa. Okay, well it runs, uh, sounds terrible. I was wondering what this little patch looking thing was and now I know it's uh, covering a hole, not very well. Cool, well, that wraps up the uh, troubleshooting, I guess. That runs uh, started up pretty quickly. Thanks for hanging in there. Thanks for seeing me through and uh, good luck out there. Till next time.